Okay. Um, just want to read from um, Isaiah chapter 49 and verses uh, 14, 15, and uh, 16. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 49 and verse 14. Verse 14 says, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you in the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Um, so here it, it's in response to the cry of the people of God. Zion has said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Forsaken, forgotten. Right? So they are their, their cry is this, that the Lord has forsaken me, the Lord has forgotten me. And the Lord asks this question, can a woman, can a woman forget her nursing child? Right? Uh, the impossibility of such a, uh, such a situation. A mother, how can a mother forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Um, so it's talking about a highly improbable situation, like, woman forgetting the nursing child and, and not, not having compassion on the son. So the extreme cases, right, it might happen. So that's what the second part of the verse, Isaiah 49, verse 15, the second part is, surely they may forget, yet I will not forget. So the so Lord is really comparing himself, his love, and verse 16, see, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Yeah. So let's uh, this morning as we uh, you know as we as we start, um, let's be reminded and reassured. You know, the word of God reminds us about uh, the, I mean, the extent to which He loves us, the strength of His love, the intensity of God's love, right? um, and even in the face of certain things um, like the mother's love failing, right? even then says um, his love does not fail which means that his love is you know more complete is uh, doesn't have the failings of human nature is not limited by human nature but goes beyond that right so let's be reminded of it and uh, reassured of it um, as we begin this day let's pray father we thank you we thank you for these uh Lord, for these promises and for this reminder from your word, God, about your love, Father God. Yes, as impossible as that situation is for a mother to forget her nursing child, for a mother to forget or to ha not have compassion on the child of her womb, God, as impossible as that situation is, even if that happens, Lord, Lord, your word declares that your love for us and you will never, Lord, uh, love us less, Lord, that you will continue to love us, God. You will not forget forget us, oh God. Um, and we are not forsaken by you, God. And we thank you that the cr cross declares your undying love for us. The cross declares your unconditional love for us, Lord. And so we thank you, Father God. And thank you that we are, Lord, in the palm of your hands, God. That you have inscribed our names in the palm of your hands. Nothing escapes your attention, God. So, Father God, this morning, we just want to thank you. We rejoice in the fact that we are known by you. Lord, we are reassured, oh, Father God, and strengthened, Lord, by the, uh, by the truth, by this truth, oh, Father God. And uh, may our life change, Father God. May our outlook change, our perspective change, because of this one truth, that you love us, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today as we um, continue in, in our wholeness, uh, we've been looking at chapter 5 and journeying into emotional wholeness, right? Um, so we saw that uh, when we need, when we are using the word journey, which means that it's, uh, it's uh, well, it's, uh, it's not a one-time thing. Right, it's uh, it's a journey, which means it's a it's a process, and it can be a short process. Like we said, it can be um, uh, you know a short process of just one step. You know, a journey can be one step as well. But it is also uh, you know the truth is that it can be 
a journey of many steps, right? Emotional wholeness. So when we uh, journey into emotional wholeness, um, what are some things that we need to do? What are some things that we can uh, be strong in? And we looked at three things. Right? One is receiving the Father's love, okay? That God loves us um, and, uh, and the fact that uh, he loves us, we receive that love and that strengthens, that changes us uh, completely. Okay. Second one is being established in our identity, who we are in Christ. We, we you know, kind of mentioned that as well. And the third one is to release the past, release whatever is holding us back. Okay. So let's just uh, revisit these things um, about uh, receiving the, uh, um, you know, receiving the Father's love. Okay. Now, it's a very basic uh, or a, a I should not say basic, but maybe it's a very simple truth um, that God loves us. Okay, um, especially if it's a, you know when we know that uh, the truth of Scripture, uh, when we read through the Gospels, um, uh, this whole theme of God's love comes over and over again. And even when we you know this Scripture that we just read um, from Isaiah, that the love of God is so much it's so strong and he loves us okay um if you look at sin right one of the things that sin did was to completely cover up this aspect of god's love because sin brought in fear right sin brought in shame and so because of fear and shame um if you if you look at what happened in the garden Adam and Eve distanced themselves from God. You know, they hid the the whole aspect of this fellowship and communion and love suddenly disappeared. You know, it's like instantly they forgot how much God loved. Instantly they, you know, ceased to, um, you know, function in that love or walk in that confidence. Right. So sin actually broke something uh, in them. This aspect, this confidence, this communion, sin has broke that. Right? So now, having been restored because of the cross, once we receive Jesus, and uh, and because our soul, our mind, will, emotions, intellect, you know, the soul realm is still uh, untouched, right? And we need to renew. We need to renew our thinking. We need to. Uh, you know, renounce certain lies of the enemy. It is possible that um, there are still remnants of certain lies about God and about God's love. Okay, we might say God loves us, and we might say, okay, um, you know, uh, I know, I know that God loves. You know, but then, is that revelation there in our spirit? You know, have we received that revelation? of the extent of God's love, right? Because once we receive that, or once we understand that, uh, that truth sets us completely free. And that truth makes us emotionally whole. You know, some aspects of our lives where we are, maybe we could be craving for attention, craving for approval, right? Uh, from, from a person, individual, or it could be a community of people, friends, family. Because something is deep down, you know, something is broken deep down because of maybe a sense of rejection, maybe a sense of insecurity, right? Where there is a, there could be a, a, a deep hunger for approval, a deep hunger for approval, which could come through words, which could come through touch, you know, approval of man, of another human being. Right. Now, when that uh, when that thing is still there, when that brokenness is still there, when uh, when we know that, when we when we realize that, okay, that is still not healed, then we see that it leads to all kinds of problems in the soul, in the soul realm, right? And uh, because there's a problem in the soul realm, it leads to you know behavior being. Uh, weird and strange and and uh, and also you know people doing things certain things uh because they want attention okay. and it is um you know it's it's very very um, obvious in children like children want uh, parents attention children want uh, 
crave for approval. You know, they you you you've seen. You know, they they do something and then they show. You know, they say, you know, look at this, look at this, look at what I draw, look at what I drawn. Um, you know, how is this? How is that? See, you know, you know the playground. They're saying, see, see what I'm doing. See, you know, I've I've climbed the slide. See how fast I'm running. See how, you know, uh, how I'm sliding. Uh, see, I can do this cartwheel. You know, children want that. There's nothing wrong. And uh, and it, and it just goes on to prove that this is how we've been designed. Right? We uh, we want that uh, approval and affirmation. So when that approval and affirmation from God Himself is not there, then uh, no matter what kind of affirmation or approval or recognition we get from people, that is still empty. So we. we we just want more. We just want more. We just want more. So that area is still festering. You know, it's not healed. Okay. So receiving the Father's love, which is unconditional, it is not earned, which you don't have to perform in order to receive. Right? You just we just have to believe and receive it because it. It is freely given. It is unconditional. Uh, that whole unconditional concept itself can be very, very uh, alien to us, right? Because everything that we see in the world around us is conditional, right? Uh, the way the whole system works, the world system works, it's conditional. You know, you give me this, and I'll give you this in return, right? Um, you either pay or someone else pays, and then you. You know, you get to enjoy or receive you know, goods and services, whatnot. So everything is so conditional, right? But when we come to the Lord and we when we when we see that His love is unconditional, and uh, we are you know we we are either too too stunned or we we don't understand it, and we we still try to earn this love, right? Um. Let's look at uh, you know some of these verses. John three sixteen. All of us know that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Romans five eight also talks about the fact that God loves us while we were yet sinners. Right. So, so these are some scriptures which talk to us about the you know the quality of love. Like the characteristic of God's love, which is unconditional, which is, uh, which which actually beats uh, in 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 Paul's time when he wrote to the Romans, it it actually confounded them. You know, how can this be? How can this be that you know uh, we who are keeping the law and we who are there to you know the rituals and everything and how can this be? You know, the whole aspect of grace itself, something that confounded them. It's it's so scandalous, right? But the fact is this: that while we receive His love, while we get under revelation of His love and embrace that, the extent to which we receive, the extent to which we receive, um, to receive His love, to that extent we are made emotionally whole. To that extent, we see, you know, some deep-rooted issues. Uh, that have stayed with us, very stubborn. We see those things uh, being uprooted. We see those things falling away, and we see ourselves walking in greater confidence um, and uh, in greater freedom. Right. So we're not afraid of man anymore. Not afraid in the sense, you know, it's not like we are being disrespectful, uh, but you're not dependent on. Man's approval right, for your life. Um, let's look at the scripture, Ephesians 1 4 to 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So he chose us. Okay. It's it's you know, it's not like you know, he wants us to be holy and without blame, and then he will choose. If you see the order, he chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blame without blame before him in love. 
having predestined us to adoption. So when we choose him, we are already predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We are predestined for adoption, right? according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved. This acceptance is a big thing. Okay. Um, we, there are times when we need to, you know, when it comes to human relations, we need to earn that acceptance. But with God, He takes the initiative to accept us, to choose us, to so that we might be found in love, without blame, and being holy. He chose us before the foundation of the world, which means that even before things were set in motion. You know, this is this was his desire that they are chosen, they are accepted. Okay, so accepted, adopted, chosen, you know, and chosen, adopted, accepted to be part of his family. Uh, one more scripture, Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 7. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses okay great which you know many, many times it's is easier to um, picture the fact that god loves us if we have read the word right god loves me when i'm saying the right things but god loves me when i'm doing the right things okay uh, god loves me if i'm if i'm preaching message. God loves me when I'm sharing, witnessing to another person about Jesus. Um, but if I'm not doing any of that, then we begin to doubt God's love, or we begin to you know, come to a place of saying, uh, you know, maybe God doesn't love me as much. Right. Okay, I think I see a question here. Okay, can we point the narcissistic behavior back to a lack of approval, lack of being understood at an early age. Okay, narcissistic meaning self-absorbed, um, you know, and, and also sadistic. Okay, these are two different things, right? Uh, narciss narcissistic is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, being the center of attention and being self-absorbed. Um, and sadistic is inflicting pain on others. Right, um, or uh, you know, taking pleasure in others, uh, others' downfall, you know, being sadistic. So two different things. So um, yes, in a way, there could be many factors, but this could be one factor. You know, lack of approval. Um, uh, narcissistic, uh, definitely. You know, because you are absorbed with oneself, and you're doing things to oneself in order to be that focus you know, we want everybody's focus and attention upon you right so you're so absorbed you know how am i looking how am i doing things and how am i you know uh, absorbed to the extent that you know everybody's eyes everybody's attention needs to be you know, on one person right so so that's the thing that could be um, lack of approval and even lack of being understood i think so the lack of approval is a lack of approval lack of being loved is is a root right um so yeah that could be one of the factors yes okay right so um so we see that okay it's easy to say that okay god as long as i'm doing all this then you know there is love from the father but if i'm not uh, doing any of this, or if I failed in, you know, any one of these things, then God doesn't love, or God doesn't care, right? But the fact is this, you know, over and over again, if uh, like Romans in the book of Romans, and uh, and also in Ephesians, we see that God, while we were yet sinners, while we were dead in trespasses, right? While we were not yet on the scene, actually, if you if you look at it, that's the thing, we were not yet on the scene. Um, um, not not you wanted in existence, and such uh, such was the greatness of His love, with which He loved us. Right, so we see that that God's love is um, is is so strong, is is far reaching, um, and and this is how He demonstrated it. 
right? While we were dead in trespasses. So, which means that, yes, it does not depend on my performance, right? Now, having said that, the, the other thing is that, so can I live as, as I want to, okay? And still be loved by God. Yeah, we will still be loved by God, right? And, and the great picture is the same question, right? The, the Pharisees asked, you know, why is Jesus with the sinners? You know, does he not know the kind of people he's rubbing shoulders with? Right? They do not go to the temple. They do not, you know, keep the law. They have a very questionable lifestyle. Uh, why is Jesus fellowshipping with them? Why is he eating with them? Why is he even bothered? Okay. And uh, in, in, in the Luke's Gospel, we see that the Lord talking about those parables to teach one thing, that this is the Father's um, father's heart, right? This is the Father's heart. Uh, God the Father, this is how much he loves. You know, we see that in Luke 15, right? Um, in the parable of the lost coin, parable of the uh, lost sheep, uh, and the prodigal son, right? So this is the Father's heart. What is it? That he is seeking those who have gone astray. That he is seeking those who uh, who who do not love him, who are living in a open rebellion, like who have taken the inheritance and squandered even, right? Um, so uh, even with the, in, in, in the prodigal son, he's talking about you know the father's son, they have the relationship, but despite that, he took the inheritance and squandered it. And, uh, and the father accepted, the father was actually seeking, the father was waiting for the son to return, right? So we see that. So the kind of uh, love. So, so the the question you know people still ask, and maybe we ask ourselves, you know, I've I've lived like this, I've behaved like this. So uh, maybe the father doesn't love me, right? Um, but God does. God does love. So because of His love, can I live any way I want to? Okay. The fact is, well, God will continue to love. God is still seeking. And he's waiting for us to return. He does not approve of our actions because our actions, uh, which uh, which could be in rebellion, open rebellion to God, or you know, taking His grace for granted, will result in consequences. That is something that we need to understand, right? Uh, when we place ourselves uh, outside of His approval, outside of His shade of safety and protection, you know, we we will have consequences. We are opening doors. We are giving permission. We are giving permission for the enemy to enter in. Right? We are stepping out of the perimeter. So there will be consequences. We need to understand that. Okay. Um, but the fact is that he will continue to love. He's expecting us to. So it's a very powerful thing. So this, the fact that God loves us so much, you know, instead of saying, okay, I now I can do what I want. It, it should be the other way around. It, it, it's a place of strength where we say, God loves me so much. How can I do whatever I want? How can I live however I want? Right? In response to this love, this kind of love. So this kind of love, uh, you know, in Scripture we see that it's, it's the unconditional God kind of love, agape. Right? So, uh, the instruction that we see in Ephesians chapter 3 is that because of God's love being unconditional, immeasurable, uh, and so on, uh, what, what is it that we see? That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and depth and height, length, uh, width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, there's so much in these verses, right? That you may dwell in your hearts, that Christ may dwell in your hearts of faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in love. You know there was a there was a tree which uh, uh, which was in our house uh, in uh, in, our, in our hometown not in Bangalore uh, in Tamil Nadu. So there was this tree and uh, it, it was small. It, it just kept growing, kept growing. 
um, I, I forget the technical name for that tree, but we used to call it an Ashoka tree, deep roots, and uh, so deep that we had one water sump. So it would, it actually went, the roots went there, broke through that water sump, uh, you know, like a, a underground embedded water tank, right? So uh, it broke through that cement, broke through that concrete, and the roots went there to get the water, right? So and and it was actually the entire the uh, the cement flooring on the ground. You know, it it would just come up because of the you know it was so strong roots were. And finally, you know, we it was damaging everything, the walls. So it had to be uh, kind of cut, and uh, we had to remove those roots. And it was a very difficult task. You know, they had to pour some acid and some chemical to do that. Um, it was it was it was being very very um, destructive to the whole thing. Yeah. So we had to do that. But the thing is, this you know, uh, this rooted and grounded. You know, we have this picture. It's not like one tiny plant right, which you can just pluck out. This rooted and grounded as love is like that root, like that tree, which goes in search of water, which is cutting through, you know, which is breaking down all kinds of barriers, even cement and stone, to get to that life source, right? And so strong. Um, so here, the exhortation is this, that the Christ may dwell in your hearts through love, that you being rooted and grounded in love, is for us to understand and to come to that place of experiencing God's love and being assured, you know, being reminded, being assured, this is God's love for me. And this is God's love for me. So without the without faith, you know, that's what it is. Without faith, that you know, the Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that comes first. Uh, we sometimes depend on feelings. Okay, so there's no faith. But we're depending on feelings, or even we are, you know, depending on feelings to have faith. I'm not feeling it, so how can I have faith? But uh, the word of God is very clear. You know, believe and you will see. You know, that's what Jesus said. You know, believe and you will see the glory of God. You know, Lazarus was dead, and and he and he's having this conversation um, with his sister and. You know, that's what the Lord says. Yeah, believe, and you would see the glory of God. Okay, so the seeing comes next. Right, seeing is you know one of the senses. Right, seeing, feeling, hearing, right, all that is one of the senses. Something to do with our natural senses. So the Lord is saying you do the believing first, the faith, the spiritual comes first, what happens in the heart, and you will see, you know, it will be apparent to the senses, right? be manifest to the senses. So here, same thing, you know, you make Christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. So the faith aspect comes first, you know, that we believe that this is the extent of God's love, and that changes us. So, you know, our hearts are rooted, our lives are rooted and grounded in the love of God. Okay, and then all the other things happen. We we understand the love of God, further understand the love of God, which passes knowledge even. Right? It's a revelation uh, which goes beyond our understanding, passes knowledge that we are, and then we are filled with the fullness of God. Okay, so so we need to come to that place of strength. And you know, when uh, and this is an ongoing discipline, right? And what will this why are we studying this? Because it's one of the main things to uh, keep us emotionally whole right as we journey on to emotional wholeness now this is something that's liberating that's strengthening that's going to keep us in that place okay and make us um uh, uh, strong against the attacks of the enemy right yeah the enemy will come with discouragement the enemy will come with at any any point you know any season of our lives the enemy comes in and questions uh, and brings in discouragement, especially in this area. You know, God is forsaken. God is just like how, you know, uh, that verse. Let me just read that again, right? Isaiah forty-nine, right? Um, 
Isaiah 49, verse 14. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. You know, the many instances that happen where we come to that conclusion. The Lord has forgotten, the Lord has forsaken. Right? What does the Lord say? It says, can a mother forget her nursing child or not have compassion on the um, son of a womb, a child of a womb? Even if that happens, yet I will not. Right? Even if that happens, surely they may forget, yet I will not. Right? That's what the Lord says. So to come to that place. So, um, we talk about agape, God kind of love, uh, different characteristics of love, right? experiencing God's love. First of all, we need to understand that there can be only one source of this love. It's this kind of strong, uh, immeasurable, unconditioned love is God and God alone. Like the world goes in search of that kind of love. You know, if you if you if you look around. The world is constantly, uh, you know, when I say world, you know, I'm talking about believers also, right? Um, the world, of course, the people who do not know Jesus are constantly going in search of that love. And, you know, and maybe they're thinking, okay, maybe here, you know, I will find that love. Here, I will find that love. In doing this, I will experience, you know, some sort of fulfillment from this emptiness. Maybe if I, there's only one source, and that is the Lord himself. There's only one source for this kind of love. Now we need to settle it. Now nothing else is going to satisfy. No one else is going to satisfy. Yes, there will be. You know, God will definitely, you know, use them to bring companionship and and uh, you know bring us to a place of and, and God has designed right uh, companionship, and spouse, and family, and friendships, and all that. It is the Lord. Who has this kind of love? He's the one who has designed it, but he is the source. Okay, so uh, which means that every other kind of love has its limitations. So we can't fool ourselves by singing, "Oh, this person, this group, oh, they're going to love me like this." No, there's no one who can love us like Jesus. There's no one who can love us like our Father. So um, we receive that love. It comes from only one source, right? This kind of love. So when we experience this kind of love, there are a lot of things that happen. Right? A lot of things that happen to us. Uh, 1 John 4 and verse 18. Okay, let's read that. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, this perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Right? So, um, what happens in this when this perfect love comes in? When when we grow in our experience, revelation, and experience of this perfect love of God, then it edges out fear. Okay edges out all kinds of fear, fear of the past, fear of the you know present, fear of the future, fear of failure, fear of man, whatever it is, right? Uh, it it edges out, pushes out that fear. And and that is a very liberating thing. Like when we don't do not have that kind of fear that cripples, that kind of fear that imprisons us. And that that kind of fear that you know we're not proud of. Right? We are ashamed of. Why should I have this kind of fear? But, but the love of God sets us free. Okay, the love of God sets us free from that fear, and so uh, you know. So that's that's something that uh, that we need to understand, right? So love of God, experiencing this perfect love of God, releases us from guilt, shame, condemnation. Uh, what we saw in Ephesians chapter one. Right? We are totally released from this. Right? So all the remnants of that, they get taken away. The enemy uses that. We're going to look at that. You know, we we saw that earlier also. But you know, this renouncing this lie. The enemy speaks lies, saying, "Okay, not yet, not yet. You know, you're not yet loved by God. You need to get rid of this one thing, and then you will be loved. You know, uh, this one thing, then you will be loved. This, um, you, you know, you need to do this." And then you will be loved. Oh. 
it's like what the Galatian church was undergoing, you know, the kind of teaching that was doing the rounds over there. You need to be circumcised in order to be saved. Right? You need to keep the law. You need to keep these things. Well, the love of God sets us free from that, right? from every sense of guilt and shame, condemnation. Um, the love of God sets us free. You know, so even when we look in, look back, maybe there are certain things that um, that we are not proud of, you know, that we are ashamed of. Even when we think about that, um, but we need to understand and bring that under the blood of Jesus. Right? We bring that under the blood and say that is under the blood. Okay, that is covered covered by the blood of Jesus. And I am loved by Him, despite that. And we need to tell us that tell ourselves that right? because that's the truth okay it's not some mental gymnastics some psychological you know manipulation or some new age affirmation no 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 this is the truth so we need to remind ourselves of the truth and get rid of the lie you know, in our own minds so you can see that how you know how much of healing can happen to our emotions when we when we accept this simple truth or when we accept this, you know, um, this perfect love of God. Okay, so uh, we are set free. Uh, we are set free from all kinds of feelings of being unloved or rejected, uh, because Ephesians one six says that we are accepted in the beloved. Okay, so. Um, you know, if we have not really experienced the love of God, maybe our parents were, you know, we know we know that we are thankful, and grateful to God for our parents, earthly parents. Um, you know, but we all know that our parents have limitations or had limitations. If they are not there anymore, they had limitations probably. Um, and maybe if uh, you know, if we have never ever had parents, we just you know, earthly parents. Then also, you know, we are in a place where we're saying, okay, I, I never experienced that love, you know, from my parents. I never, I never experienced that feeling of being loved. No one told me that. No one expressed that. And, you know, no one in simple ways, like maybe, you know, with words or maybe just put an arm, arm around me and, and accepted, you know, appreciated what I did. And, you know, applauded what I did. There's no, you know, if that has been uh, our experience, you know, when we encounter this love, okay, when we encounter this awesome love of God, knowing that this person who is far above everything else or everyone else, like far superior to everything or everyone else. And just think about that, you know, far superior. His opinion really matters. His wisdom is far superior. Uh, his strength is far superior. So when he loves, when he says you are accepted, when he says you are, I appreciate you, when he says you are precious, that's something that we need to sit up and take notice. Not someone who does not understand. Not someone. Not you know someone who uh, you know who who does not whose love is very very maybe it could be conditional. It could be selfish. But this pure, perfect, and intense love of God uh, coming from Him. So that is something that we need to sit up and take notice and say, okay, this is something that I'm going to value. Okay, so when we receive that, all these feelings of being unloved, rejected, unappreciated, right, uh, unaccepted, and as children, you know, I'm just looking back. As children, uh, you know, we've always made fun of some people who were different from us, right? Maybe people who were who wore glasses at a very young age, people who were, you know, different, you know, looking. Um, physically right maybe they were fat maybe they were thin maybe they were tall you know anything uh, as kids we made fun of we put labels we we did them maybe some some guys were slow and some were, we made fun of them right uh, and some of those labels stick right 
and uh, some things stick with them through the the adult phase okay but the fact is that you know only god receiving god's love actually erases all that brings uh, erases in the sense that it's not like people don't remember but the pain people will not feel even if they remember even if they have that memory the pain of that memory yes the lord heals completely and removes completely okay so that's something uh, that we are set free from that since we are accepted okay the other thing is that all kinds of uh, all sense of unworthiness worthlessness self worth and uh, you know self esteem okay if we are received by god if we are called as sons and daughters and uh, it says you know you you matter to me okay that's what god just what john 3:16 very very clearly declares that you matter to me that you are precious to me and that's what it declares right so that's what is communicated by god to hurting humanity that you matter and you are precious uh, and you are so loved that i am going to come and do this thing i'm going to carry the sin to world upon myself why because you matter okay so so this uh this kind of uh, love uh, takes away all kinds of rejection and also the the need to do something to earn the love okay all kinds of unworthiness all kinds of you know self lack of self esteem self a sense of poor sense of self worth all that goes because god is saying you matter you are precious you matter okay um then also uh the fact that he has actually raised us up he has made us sit with him in the heavenly places and also you know he has set us free so many things right uh fear of failure has set us free from uh being slaves of sin and uh, roman 6 talks about how we are you know we are no more slaves of sin but actually slave of righteousness right um so we receive his love um and all kinds of internal turmoil strangely are quieted because we've received his love okay look at zephaniah 317 okay zephaniah 317 the lord your god in your midst the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing okay he talks about god celebrating us and right? he's in our midst he's a mighty one he is rejoicing he says he would rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you with his love just want to draw our attention to that he will quiet you with his love you know if there's any kind of term what is that quieting you know is it because you are you know rejoicing and exuberant no no this is the opposite of that if you are you know in turmoil you know if you are turbulent and experiencing all kinds of fear or anxiety it says you know he will quiet you with his love very reassuring that he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing okay so this receiving god's love is a very very important aspect of journeying into emotional wholeness and this is you know we this is something that comes under attack this is something that we forget this is something that um, you know uh, if we are not careful uh, we we might say oh yeah i know god loves okay i know jesus loves me i've seen that sticker i've seen that smiley right so if you're not ca- careful we 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 might actually take it for granted okay and lose out on so much because we are not rooted and grounded in the love of god okay okay so that's the first thing the second thing is to be established strengthened in who we are in the lord jesus very very important our identity in christ very important you know if if you look at uh, i'm sure you 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 know you see you notice that uh, when the lord jesus was tempted you know uh, we see in luke chapter 4 uh, we see that the temptation over and over again uh, hits at the identity 
his identity. What kind of identity did he have? You know, he was the son of God, right? So that is the first thing, right? And that's the recurring thing. If you are the son of God, command these stones to be changed into bread. Right? If you are the son of God, so that's the that's the thing, you know. He asks, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Or it is written, it's quoting scripture, right? If you are the son of God. So the identity of who we are to God and who he is to us um, is something that is that needs to be rock solid, right? That's another thing that needs to be strong, just like the father's love and we being strong in it, um, the identity of who we are to him, right? It is, it is, it, it, it is the same thing as, uh, or, you know, it is an overflow of that. God loves us. And why? Because we are his sons and daughters. Why? Because, you know, it, it we, we have been changed on the inside out and our status has changed, our position has changed, our relationship has changed, right? Our standing before him has changed. It's not like it is going to change once I change my behavior. No, it has changed now, right now, because of what he did not because of what I'm not doing, because of what he did on the cross, that something has changed. So my identity has changed. Now, all I have to do is to receive that by grace, through faith, right? So, and being, again, strong in that. What is my identity? Who am I? Right? So, uh, in Christ, I'm loved. In Christ, I am saved. In Christ, I am justified, just as if I've never sinned. In Christ, you no, know, he who knew no sin became sin so that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Right? Second Corinthians 5 and verse 21, right? So um, now this these are powerful truths that um, we need to be established in, which which really establish our identity with God. Uh, identity uh, in Christ, sorry. Um, so let's look at that verse again. Second uh, Corinthians 5 and... Uh, okay. Um, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away because all things have become new. Yeah, very well known. Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay, so that is our position, that is our spiritual standing, that we might become, that we have become the righteousness of God in him. Okay, it's always in him. So it's not cause to boast or you know be arrogant in that I can do what I want again, you know, with the love of God, you know, we sometimes come to the wrong conclusion. God will love me anyway. You know, here also we could come to a wrong conclusion. Oh, this is who I am. I am made perfect. You know, I am justified. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So that it doesn't matter what I do. No, that's a wrong conclusion. Right? It does matter what we do. Right? So it transforms, it changes what we do in life. What are some of the things? Transforms the way we relate to God. Right? Uh, we, it brings us so much confidence. We can come boldly to the throne of grace, like Hebrews says, Hebrews 4. Come boldly to the throne of grace. To receive grace and mercy, of course. Right? But we can come boldly to his presence. Why? Because he has made the way. He has made the way. And that's uh, the his making that way changed our identity. And that way is talking about how uh, the veil was torn and, and how we have access uh, to come to him because of his shed blood. It talks about identity, right? Now, we are no longer alienated, but we are sons of God. No, we have, who are far off, now have been brought near. Okay, so uh, transforms the way we relate to God, transforms the way we look at ourselves, changes the way we look at ourselves, so we see ourselves as new creation. We don't see ourselves as, you know, people continuing in sin or caught up in sin. We see ourselves as new creation because that's how God sees us. We see ourselves as people, as saints who are being sanctified. And we see ourselves as people who have, you know, by, who 
for whom by one sacrifice he has perfected those who are being so he has, he has sanctified those who are being perfected okay. or, or perfected those who are being sanctified right so we see ourselves in that way because that's how he sees us right so that's our spiritual standing with him so only when we see you know ourselves or when we believe that this is who we have become in christ can we see the outcome of that belief which is changed behavior which has changed emotions which is healing and wholeness right okay so we'll stop here uh, and then we'll uh, continue next class okay just tomorrow okay god bless you have a great day bye bye thank you pastor right see you